Hello, so in today's video, we're going to look at tangents, so tangent lines to curves. So um, I've just drawn like a random example here. So let's say you've got y equals f of x. I'm just going to move this uh, up a little bit over to here. So we've got a, uh, a quadratic curve here, y equals f of x. And let's say we've got this straight line graph, y equals mx plus c, tangent at the point a. So a tangent line, uh, let's just make a note of this. So tangents uh, touch curves at uh, at a particular point. So that's what a tangent line is. It's just a, a straight line that touches a curve at a particular point. OK, so let's think about this. Then. So we've got this y equals mx plus c line, which touches this quadratic curve at this point A. So we know that point A lies on both the curve y equals f of x and y equals mx plus c. So it must be true that at the point A, f of x must be equal to mx plus c at a uh, because, again, they intersect or they touch um, each other. The two lines, the two graphs touch each other at this point a. So it must be true that this, uh, the y coordinates there for, well, the y coordinate there is literally your y value there. Your x coordinate there is your x value there. So at these two points um, where they touch, it must be true that f of x is equal to mx plus c. And so therefore, just by rearranging this equation, we get f of x minus mx uh, minus c must be equal to zero. Now, we know that this must be a quadratic equation because f of x is a quadratic because we've just assumed that it is a quadratic. And you're taking away some linear terms, a linear uh, factor there. So you're going to get a quadratic. So this is a quadratic equation. OK, so we've got this equation f of x minus mx minus c equals zero. It's clearly quadratic. Um, so, and yes, where X is the X coordinate um, of our point A. So this is our point A there. Um, now, as we can see, there is only one X coordinate where Y equals F of X, the curve, meets the line Y equals MX plus C. So in other words, this equation, this quadratic up here, F of X take away MX minus C equals zero, has only one solution. It's got one X solution because there is literally only one x coordinate, this one here, where they meet each other. So one x solution and y, uh, sorry, one y solution as well. OK, so this quadratic must have one solution. And because it's a quadratic with only one real solution, um, that solution must be a repeated solution, so a repeated root. So in other words, this quadratic expression must be equal to um, really, I should actually put like a, a uh, sorry, I really should put like a, a number here because it could be a, a different, um, the, the coefficient of x squared for this quadratic could be a different number than one. So really, I should put like a, a b there, for example, uh, where b is just a real number. Let me just try and fit this in here. So this means that this quadratic is equal to um, x minus a all squared, where uh, you've got uh, a repeated root. And essentially, the repeated root in this case would be x equals a over b, because when you set this factor equal to zero, um, bx minus a equal to zero, you get x equals a over b. And this is a repeated root. So it's a repeated root. So the key point really from today's video that I want to emphasize is that when you have a tangent, uh, on a curve, touching a curve at a particular point, that x coordinate is a repeated root for the equation f of x subtract the equation of that straight line. So this is a repeated root um, because, again, it's a quadratic, yet there's only one real solution. It's a repeated solution. Um, OK, so in general, then, in the general case, when you have a line y equals mx plus c and it's tangent to some random curve, y equals f of x, maybe some random curve like this black one I've drawn there, um, at a point a, b. So let's say you've got a point there with an x coordinate of a and a y coordinate of b. So this point a, b there. Um, then the equation f of x subtract mx subtract c equals zero has a repeated root at x equals a. So there is a repeated root at this coordinate there. So in other words, what does that mean? Well, it means that um, essentially you can write the solution like this. You can say 
um, f of x, sorry, not the solution, the, the, the quadratic expression, um, f of x minus mx minus c, you can write it like this. So b multiplied by x minus a all squared, where um, b is just some number, it's just some factor, so it could be one, could be anything you like, really. Um, this factor here times by x minus a squared, um, multiplied by another factor, because in theory, um, you know, this, this f of x may not be a quadratic, could be a cubic, could be a quartic. Um, so actually, yeah, this is multiplied by some other function. I'll just call it g of x, uh, where g of x is some other function. So, I mean, it could be the number one, literally the number one, could be x, could be x minus 10, um, could be any factor that you like, any function you like. Um, but essentially, the key point is that this x equals a is a repeated root because it's because the straight line is tangent to the curve at this point here. And in fact, the two there could be something bigger than two. So really what I should say here, um, to be more precise and more general, is that this is equal to a number times x take away a to the power of n, where n uh, is a bigger number than uh, one. So it's a bigger um, integer than one. So uh, bigger than or equal to two, and n is some integer, um, some natural number. Um, okay, so let's look at like a cubic example. So let's consider this cubic here, and let's consider this straight line y equals 2x minus 3. So given that y equals 2x minus 3 is tangent to the cubic at the point y equals 1, we've got to find the points of the, uh, the points of intersection between the cubic and the line. So that's our, our question to deal with. Um, so we've got a cubic, perhaps something like this, maybe. Uh, you've got a straight line, uh, 2x minus 3. Uh, OK, maybe it's, it's more something like this. So you've got 2x minus 3, y-intercept of minus 3, gradient of 2. And we're going to touch the curve. So the straight line is going to touch the curve at this point here, where the y-coordinate is 1. And we've got to see whether there are any other points of intersection, which there will be, because this will go down here, and the straight line will go through there. So we've got to find this coordinate up here where, uh, where, where it's tangent, where the line is tangent to the curve, and also this point of intersection here. So let's try this. So we know that we've got a tangent when y equals 1. So we know that when y is 1, well, that means that, um, well, we need to find the x-coordinate, don't we? So when y is 1, you've got, uh, if we just take the straight line equation, just because it's easy to deal with. So 1 is equal to 2x minus 3. So that implies that 4 is equal to 2x, so therefore x equals 2. So this x coordinate there must be 2. That's what we know from that. OK, so we've got, therefore, we've got a uh, the, the line is tangent. Let me write this again. So the line is tangent to the curve at coordinates 2 and 1. OK, so we know that. So therefore... The equation, uh, well, when we uh, when we set the this expression equal to this expression, because remember at this coordinate here, these expressions must satisfy each other. So that tells us that x cubed minus two x squared minus two x plus five equals two x minus three. This equation must have, so it has, um, so it has a repeated root, has repeated uh, root at x equals 2 because the curve is tangent at x equals 2 that the line touches the curve at x equals 2 so therefore we've got a repeated root at x equals 2 so that means that i mean if we just rearrange this expression here so take away the 2x on both sides add the 3 to both sides we get x cubed take away 2x squared uh take away 4x uh, plus 3 gives us a plus 8 there, is equal to 0. So this cubic equation has a repeated root at the point x is equal to uh, the number 2. So we know that for a fact. Now let's try and just uh, keep everything on the same diagram. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Um, let's try this instead so I can keep everything on the same page again. Um, okay, yeah, so... Um,
so I'll just move this up here. There we go. Right. So yeah. Um, and uh, let me just drop the D out there and put the D back here. Um, okay. So we've got a repeated root at x equals two. So therefore, this expression here must be equal to x minus two squared times by some factor g of x that we don't know. So this is what I was trying to say back here that um, it's a repeat. So x equals a here is a repeated root, but we've got some other factor potentially that we need to work out. So it could be a constant or it could be another actual expression in terms of x. So we've got a repeated root x minus two all squared times by some g of x. And we need to actually determine what that is. OK, so let's just write this out again here. So we've got x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 8 is equal to x minus 2 all squared. OK, if we expand the brackets, we would get x squared minus 4x um, and then a plus 4 there just by expanding the x minus 2 times by x minus 2. And then we've got some g of x factor that we don't know. And what is this factor going to be? Well, let's think about it. We've got to try and make an x cubed. Uh, we've got an x squared there already. Now, x times x squared is x cubed. So there must be an x inside there. And OK, well, you've got plus 8 here. We've already got a plus 4 here. So there must be a plus 2 here because 2 times 4 equals 8. So that's going to be our next factor. So we know now that this g of x that we need to work out is actually going to be x plus 2. So we've got another factor, and it's a linear factor. So in fact, we've got another solution. So we have got another uh, another point of intersection down here, in fact. And this point of intersection is actually going to have an x-coordinate of minus 2. And we can see that from the calculations that we have just uh, done. I'm going to try my best to, again, just keep everything on the same page. I'm just going to make the writing smaller. Um, Move this up like that. OK, great. So then now then we know. Uh, so we've got another uh, factor, x plus 2. So therefore, that means that x equals negative 2 is a root. And this time it's a simple root. So it's a root with multiplicity ones. So it's not a repeated root. So it's just a normal point of intersection. So x equals 2 is also a root. Now, when x equals 2, my, uh, negative 2, what would the y value be? Well, we just plug this into the straight line equation just because it's easier. Uh, we've got y equals 2 times minus 2 minus 3. And this would equal minus 4 take away 3 minus 7. So we have a point of intersection. So this cubic and this straight line has points of intersection uh, at the coordinates um, minus 2 minus 7. And it's also tangent. So the straight line is tangent uh, at the coordinates 2 and 1. So we've got, well, in theory, two points of intersection. One of them is literally a point of intersection where the, the, the lines cross. One of them is a tangent point where they just touch. So that's the key point from this example. And, yeah, the key point, again, from the, for this video is that um, tangents give rise to repeated roots. So that's the key point to, to understand is that tangents... So tangents to curves give rise to repeated roots. So that's the key thing that we need to bear in mind um, with, with tangent lines.